because it was a shocking outcome, no other way to say it. Uh, but before the election, here's what you tweeted. You said it's totally over. If Trump wins more than 240 electoral votes, I will eat a bug. I think you said it here on this show as well. Now, we don't want you to eat a bug, but all the polls were wrong. Well, I, I, I made a promise. Yeah, and all the polls were wrong, uh, including yours. And, you know, we were up here saying it as, a, as the journalists and the anchors who were giving out the information from the pollsters. So what happened? What went wrong? Yeah, I think what happened here is that it is true that uh, people who are uh, aggregating polls, including myself, were uh, pretty sure uh, to varying degrees of a Clinton victory. And uh, the fact of the matter is that there was a reasonably large polling error. The polling error was something like uh, three to six percentage points, uh, six points in Senate races, three or four points for the presidency. And basically, it was a, it's a polling error that's pretty large and, and it was a race that was pretty narrowly contested. Probably a, a significant cause here is undecided voters uh, who made their minds up at the last minute or who are able to state their preference. Maybe they weren't even aware of what their preference was because Donald Trump is a uniquely polarizing candidate, uh, not only between Republicans and Democrats, but also even within the Republican Party, there's something strongly polarizing about him. And what's happening on the streets is almost certainly a reaction to the unprecedented nature of his candidacy. Glory Borger, back to you. I, listen, I wonder about this, uh, and I've asked so many people, uh, some of the surrogates for Donald Trump, some of the pollsters, uh, and our very own analysts, was there a hidden Donald Trump vote? Some people say that it, it, what, there wasn't one. Uh, that's a false narrative that's being put out. What do you see? How do you see that? I, I think it's, it's really simplistic to say it's just one thing. I think that uh, in talking to people who were doing the data analytics for, for the Trump campaign, uh, they were seeing some voters in rural America that other people were not seeing, but even they said they underestimated the turnout in rural America in some states by as much as 10 percent. Uh, also, what you were just talking about was these late deciders. Among late deciders, and there was a large number of them in a lot of states, Trump won those late deciders by 10 points. So could those have been people after the FBI issue, uh, the Comey issue, could they have decided at the last minute to vote uh, against Hillary Clinton? Sure. But I think there are larger factors at play here, and John King has been talking about this, uh, you know, for the, for the past 24 hours. We have a divisions in this country. We have, uh, we have urban, rural, uh, college-educated, non-college-educated. We had divisions on gender. We had divisions on issues like trade. And all of those things heaped together, um, we, we had a Donald Trump victory. And I think the Democrats, if anything, were guilty of assuming that the middle class would be with them because they have always been in the past in those blue states. And what they didn't anticipate was that a lot of those voters feel disenfranchised and left behind, particularly in a lot of those blue Rust Belt states, and they decided to leave the Democratic Party because they felt that the candidate, Hillary Clinton, was not representing the kind of change that they feel they need and they're not getting from the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Dana, so much uh, emphasis were, was put on how women were going to vote. How did women vote? Mm -hmm. Not enough for Hillary Clinton. Uh, not enough at all, uh, and, and just in general. Uh, but the numbers were, were lower, which is true, I think, of all demographics, all, all age groups uh, across the board, uh, Democrats and Republicans, which is part of the story that Gloria was just talking about. And the one thing, uh, too, that there was a myth that that was this sweet. Yeah. Less, fewer people voted than last time, and the uh, minority demographic yeah. that was expected to show up for Hillary Clinton just didn't. So it wasn't a real sweep of people across the country, as, as we had thought, as well, which John King pointed right. out earlier. Right. It didn't turn out to be a at all. Uh, but so it was, it, that was the, the case for just women in general. But the way, the thing that really sort of cleaned her, her clock uh, with regard to the way voters came out was the divide between uh, educated women and non-educated, uh, I'm, I'm saying that wrong, uh, women who don't have a college education. <laughs> Thank right. you. Yeah. It's, been a long, it's been a long 24 <laughs> hours. We understand. I think yeah. it was two to one, yeah. according to the, according to to the polls that we've, that we've seen, against Hillary Clinton, who, of course, <laughs> was running to be the first uh, female president. And I have to say that now everything is very, very clear with 2020 hindsight, but... 
when I went to the suburban uh, Philadelphia area about a month ago now, it was right after that Access Hollywood tape broke. And these were uh, women who were, came out at that time to see Ivanka Trump. And they did not care at all about that tape. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't care about anything except for the fact that they liked Donald Trump's message, that he was an outsider, he was going to focus on economic issues, and by the way, he wasn't Hillary Clinton, who they couldn't stand. Yeah. Go ahead, David Gergen. I just want to say, Don, <clears throat> it does seem to me that given the certainty with which somebody of us approach this election and the outcome of the election right up until, you know, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock last night, uh, and how shattering and shocking the result was, that all of us ought to, I, in my judgment, ought to be a little humble mm -hmm. about trying to explain it as, as if we know. You know, we didn't understand it going in. Why should we understand it perfectly in hindsight? Uh, I think this is going to take a lot of sorting out and a, and a lot of introspection by various institutions. The polling industry really ought to look internally at sort of what happened here. Mm -hmm. Frankly, the media has a responsibility to ask. We, we need to ask ourselves, how did we cover this? What should we have done better? Did, were we enablers of Donald Trump? You know, were we too negative in the end toward him? How did, there are a lot of questions here. That it's one of our most significant elections, and I think we ought to be willing to take some time to sort of sort it out so that we understand better before we sort of rush on to the next event. Mm. All right.